Hello everyone and welcome to Smart Coach. In today's class of ancient India, we are going to talk about the Gupta architecture. Now Gupta was known as the classic age of Indian history and it was not only because economically we saw a lot of development but also because in architectural sector there was growth of enormous monuments and style which became the distinct style of India itself. Now before I talk anything else let me write the topic down Gupta architecture. Gupta architecture. Now let's start the discussion. So when we talk about Gupta architecture, perhaps this was the point when a major revolution came in the architectural style of uh, India. Now before Gupta architecture in Mauryan times, I have already discussed about the architectural uh, you know style. We had pillars standalone pillars then we had caves you know, which were given to the monks and the caves were very simple in nature the uh, you know the doorway were arched and they were decorated and this rock cut caves continued even during Gupta period. Uh, the most important architecture of Mauryan times could have been the stupas, which were the standalone semi, uh, you know, semi dome uh, or dome like structure. The dome uh, of the stupas and the pagoda of the stupas gained lot of prominence uh, during the first century AD. So, stupa, chetya, viharas, pillars and the inscriptions of Mauryan time continued even during Gupta age. But in Gupta age for the first time we see the coming of stand alone temples which became the architectural marvel of India before medieval times. So let's understand how this development happened. When we look into Gupta architecture obviously stupas were already there, stupa construction were going on by first century AD because of the influence of Mahayana, we see that stupas and the decoration of stupas also became elaborate. The gateway to stupas became more, uh, you know, decorative. So, stupas and, uh, you know, inscriptions that we see uh, continued even during Gupta time. Inscriptions of Gupta period is also very important. The way these inscriptions were written showed uh, the craftsmanship and skill of the workers in detailing how detailed they uh, were able to carve the stone and how did in a detailed way they were able to imprint each thought of the king. But along with that, uh, the next important architectural style which continued to develop was rock cut caves. Now, when we talk about rock cut caves, I think the Ajanta caves of uh, Gupta age or Udaygiri caves of Gupta age are marvelous example of rock cut cave. Not only that, the painting inside these caves have been breathtaking and people have studied those elaborate paintings and how it must have been done uh, inside those caves had remained, uh, you know, a matter of discussion. When we look into these rock cut cave, the important intricate part used to be the doorway. Now, if I uh, let me draw it for you, if you see, if you would go and visit a rock cut cave, it would have a carved doorway. And even in that carved doorway, you will see that uh, there would be motifs, uh, you know, displayed in the doorway like this. These motifs mostly were the relief uh, that were uh, inscribed in these doorways and then there would be uh, you know staircase which would uh, lead to the uh, cave. So, this was the basic structure of the rock cut caves and inside those rock cut caves by the time we come to Gupta period we see that uh, the sculptures taken from the mythology would be uh, you know uh, made or built or constructed inside the inner wall of the rock cut caves. Now from there we see if by the time we come to the era of Chandragupta uh, you know the second we see the growth of a uh, stand alone temple or independent temple. So the first independent temple were made of bricks ok. So brick brick 
brick temples were made and these brick temples did not had prominent shikhara now this have to be uh, you know understood the first uh, important brick temple that we still have and we can study is bitargaon uh, brick temple it is in bitargaon up and this brick temple is still there and we can understand but when you study this brick temple what do you find they do not have independent elaborate shikhara which we see in the nagara style of temple now what is the shikhara if you have seen a temple in india uh, the topmost or the highest point of the temple is the shikhara which is uh, constructed on the top of sanctum sanctorum or the garbagriha if there is a house uh, so let me just draw it again if we construct it as a house the garbagriha is perhaps the most important part where the idol is placed if this is the place where idol is placed this is known as garbagriha and the shikhara is on is on the top of the garbagriha and it is adorned by a flag if you see and then there are ribs coming uh, you know which it is it is constructed uh, in a form that it is it looks like there are ribs which are coming out of this shikhara and this is how it looks so this is the shikhara and this part this shikhara part is not prominent in uh, you know the first temple later on we also see the growth of sandstone and temples made of sandstone sandstone and granite okay so from brick we see the transformation of stand alone temples made of sandstone and granite now the first temple with such a shikhara was the dashavatar temple now let me write it down the dashavatar temple is the first temple it is in deogar Now this temple is the first temple with prominent shikhara and it has a jagti also what is jagti the platform on which the temple is constructed so temple is not constructed on the floor there is a platform jagti on which the temple is constructed it is the first temple with prominent shikhara plus jagti along with the dashavatar temple another prominent temple is the parvati temple which is the first two story temple that has survived from gupta period so let me just write parvati temple and it is the first two story temple that has survived from the gupta period now uh, since temple uh, this temple construction became a very important part of architecture it developed to such an extent that within india two distinct style of temple architecture came into being one was called nagara style and the other was called dravidian style now before i talk about the architecture it is very important to talk about these two prominent uh, style of temple that developed in india which is a part of gupta architecture now let me write uh, to understand these two style we will again do a comparative study between these two style so first i'll uh, write the nagara style of architecture nagara style of Dravi uh, of temple architecture and the next is dravidian style of temple architecture dravidian style of temple architecture and we will do a comparative study between these two now when we do a study of these two style we have to understand that the uh, 
location of these two style of architecture was very uh, different. Nagara style developed in North India. Uh, let me write style and Dravidian style. What are we talking about? We are talking about temple architecture which became the mainstay of Gupta architecture and how it developed. So, Nagara style of temple architecture developed in North India. Dravidian style as the no, uh, name suggests was uh, a style that developed in southern India. Now, in Nagara style, if you see uh, the uh, temple looks very different. So, if I give you example of Nagara style architecture, uh, you can search the Bhuvaneshwar temple uh, at Urissa. It is one of the Nagara style architecture temple. Even the Parvati temple that I am talking about is a Nagara style, uh, you know, temple architecture. But when we talk about Dravidian style, obviously the prominent temples of southern India for that uh, uh, for that uh, factor, the Tirumalla temple, Tirupati temple is uh, you know the perfect example of Dravidian style. The Minakshi temple is the perfect example of Dravidian style. Now, if you can bring both these images, the uh, you know the um, maybe the North Indian Bhuvaneshwar temple and the temple of Tirupati, you will see there is lot of difference in the two uh, in the two pictures. Okay, so if you see Tirupati temple, the most important uh, you know feature of the Tirupati temple is the Gopuram or the gateway which through which you enter the temple. So, the prominent feature of Dravidian style is obviously the Gopuram or the uh, or the gateway. It is the gateway, but if you go to uh, say Puri if you go to Jagannath Puri which is again in Odisha and you want to visit the Puri temple you will see whether you are in the vicinity of the temple or not but you will see the shikara of the temple from 5 kilometer distance. So, what is the most prominent feature of Nagara style of temple? The shikara it is the tallest uh, you know uh, feature or tallest uh, 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 part of the temple in Nagara style. So, shikara is the most prominent uh, you know feature of the Nagara style architecture. Another difference that you will see in both these style is the number of story. Uh, in Nagara style you may have two story of uh, you know the building. The Garbha Griha may be in the uh, in the uh, in the last floor and then the temple uh, the other part of the temple may be uh, in the uh, ascending floors. But in Dravidian style you do not have such a uh, you know division of the story there is single story. So, if I have to draw the Davidan temple you see the Nagara temple and if there is other shikharas they will be on a lower platform which actually means that if there are other shikharas in the Nagara style they will be much lower to the shikara on top of the sanctum sanctorum. But in Dravidan style the architecture is very different there is single uh, you know floor and you do not have shikara on top of sanctum sanctorum. What you actually have is the vimana on the doorway. That this is the only thing you will see the vimana on the doorway. But otherwise, there is no shikara on top of sanctum sanctorum. So what we see uh, in Dravidian style, this is called as vimana. Vimana is the highest part of the uh, you know of the temple in Dravidian style whereas Shikhara is the highest part of the Dravidian style and the temple in uh, sorry in Nagara style it is Shikhara and the temple may have multiple story. Whereas in Dravidian uh, style the temple will have uh, let me write it here single story. Also, if you see the base of Nagara style temple, the base of Nagara style temple is usually square. The Jagati is usually square. It is never rectangular. So, the Nagara style temple is usually uh, created on a square base. 
whereas the Dravidan style of temple is created on rectangular base. So if you see, if this is the temple, this is the mandapa and that is how it is. This The whole thing is one section. There is no division in the section. But in, uh, you know, in uh, Nagara style, there is a division. This is the Nitya mandapa, then Bhoja mandapa. Each mandapa is a different section and the height of the mandapas keep on coming down they dis, uh, you know they descend and the highest part is shikhara uh, or the sanctum sanctorum but this is not the case in dravidan style of temple because the mandapa and uh, the the sanctum sanctorum are on the same ground as such the base is rectangular another important aspect that uh, can be seen as a difference between nagara style and dravidan style is the use of pillar in dravidan style we see the use of pillar whereas in Nagara the pillar is minimalistically used it is not used in large number as we see in Dravidan style also when we talk about mandapa in Nagara style if you can see there are elaborate mandapas and uh, you have a Nritya mandapa a Darshan mandapa a Bhoj mandapa but in Dravidan style there is one a uh, single mandapa associated with the god. If there is a god uh, who is Vishnu, then there will be an uh, you know the Garura mandap, and if the lord is Shiva, then there will be a Nandi mandap, and that's it. You can see the difference in the temple architecture if you visit the two Dravidan style uh, temple and the. Uh, you know the uh, the Nagara style temple. So this was the basic difference in the Dravidian style and Nagara style of temple that you know developed in the Gupta period. Later on, if you see in the post Gupta period, these styles also came together and amalgamated into many other styles. Like in West Bengal, the style that developed was very different. It is a mixture of Dravidian Nagara style and the indigenous style that they had. So, uh, this was basically the class on the architectural style of Gupta period which gave India great temples like Konar temple, the solar temples, the sun temples dedicated to Lord's, uh, you know, uh, God, God's son uh, across India and uh, this was all about the architecture of Gupta period. I hope this class was helpful for you. In another class, we will meet with you in with another topic.